Hi guys, it's July 8, 2019. Let me just start by saying PayPal has not been resolved. The bank card issue was easier to solve than I thought it would be. So I'll get a new bank card in, I don't know, a week or 10 days. I don't know. At, at PayPal, it's, well, that's for another video. But I just needed to say that because people, you guys, you know, that were asking me. I'm sorry that I haven't posted a video on it. Look, I'm just not myself anymore, and I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but my main priority has always been what is going on that is affecting us collectively. So I do apologize for not being able to uh, keep it together on an awful lot else, but I need to show you what is going on just in the last 24 hours. Once again, a whole lot of areas were flooded out and I'm sure just based on my research, well mainstream media is really only focusing on the DC area and YouTubers are posting on the DC area. Well, I want to start with other areas but I am starting with this video just to show you something very interesting in the very beginning of this video. YouTube. Yo, it is biblically flooding out here. Isn't it crazy? I mean, yo, that is crazy, crazy. I've never seen anything like that. Look at that. Look how the water's coming out of my water thing. Wow. Huh. And it's not raining but water's gushing out of this drainage system or sewer system. Oh, and it is flooding the street. Wow, so it's not just rain causing all of these flash floods. Many, including myself, have said this flooding is not coming only from rain. While they are bombing areas with rain, I mean, two to three inches in an hour, that should beg questions. But I've said they're closing off sewer uh, systems and areas to create the massive flooding and pushing out water from sewer systems. When you have this happening all over the country, unprecedented, never have we seen the flooding that we are now seeing just in the past couple of months. It should beg questions. No, it's not climate change or global warming. Please, please do some research. I don't have to do any research. I believe my authority figures. Okie dokie. So you don't do any thinking for yourself. You allow the liars to think for you. And what is really interesting, sorry for the phone ringing, what is really interesting is that so many Americans know they're being lied to by mainstream media, but they still believe their authority figures. All righty. Well, when you lie and when you accept lies, you are causing an awful lot of damage. You are complicit with destroying people's lives. And the flooding in DC has been unbelievable. This is this guy's apartment uh, right outside his home. He's trying to get out of his apartment. The lobby of his, of his apartment is flooded out. He goes out into the street. Wow. Alrighty then. Lots of flooding. Lots of flooding. You know, it's endless, guys. This this goes on endlessly. Endlessly. I mean, every single day now. These videos are from the last 24 hours. All right, this is Ghost Mafia. I'm not sure where he lives. It could be Tennessee. It could be Kentucky, I think. But listen to him. Left the house to go get smokes and stuff and came back what you're about to witness firsthand 
and that is this right here. This is the road that takes you to our house. We can't even get home right now. The whole hauler is completely flooded out all the way across. It's gonna be hours before we can even get to the house, see if our animals are okay. And uh, yeah, guys, this is bad. So you go out to pick up a couple of things at a store. You turn around to go home and this is what you face. What's happening here? Holler. I vaguely remember my friend in Tennessee using that term. I think this could be Tennessee. I don't know. But it could be anywhere because this is what a whole lot of people are facing in many states. So where did this water come from? He goes to the store to pick up a couple of things, turns around to go home, and this is what he can't get home now because the street is so flooded out. Where did the water come from? SeaWorld, Orlando, Florida. Why are, what, what's going on? That everything is flooding now. Every street, parking lots, uh, mall parking lots, something is very wrong here and we need more people to start asking questions. Pueblo, Colorado. So if it's not flash flooding caused by rain or sewers spewing up water, it's this. Our top story tonight, crews are trying to figure out what caused a water main burst in downtown Pueblo, forcing a family restaurant to shut down. News 5's Jessica Barreto joins us in studio tonight. And Jessica, any idea yet on how long those repairs might take? Well, crews are still working to replace that water main, and that could go into next week. And even though water has been restored, the health department has issued a boil water alert for folks in the area since water quality test results are pending. Now, the China Lantern restaurant is next to where this happened, and they say being forced to close their doors during holiday weekend is putting them in troubled waters. Just like water everywhere. Fourth Street in Pueblo turned into a river Saturday afternoon. At one time the water was about two feet deep in this area. As thousands of gallons of water gushed out of a burst pipe. The Chinese Lantern restaurant is only a few feet from where it happened. There was water still coming into the restaurant. And as utility crews work around the clock to repair the damage underground, for this restaurant's bottom line, the damage is already done. It's really going to hurt all of us, you know, financially, because we all depend on the money. We can't wash the dishes, we can't clean, can't have no one come in, we can't serve food. Do you know how many water main uh, breaks we are having all over the country? I've included some in my videos. More and more people are going down every single day more and more people are facing the consequences of the takedown of the great U.S. of A. Americans, you ain't seen nothing yet, but the days of privilege and being comfortable, well, we still have a few left who are comfortable, but you will soon be knocked out of your comfort zone. This is taking place all over now. And it is so sad to see. And I am so, you know, flabbergasted at Americans who just don't seem to either care or they just go with the lies that they hear that it's climate change. North Carolina. North Carolina, again, this weekend, flooding, Greensboro, and yeah, car stranded, North Carolina.
look at these streets. It's all, happening all over the place. So, oh, are you with me on this? Don't you think this begs questions in people's minds? Why don't we get normal rain anymore? How come it just doesn't rain? No, instead we get severe weather, flash flooding, uh, high winds that knock down trees and cause power outages all over the place. Oh, and then, and don't rule out an isolated tornado anywhere in the country. People really do need to start looking into weather modification, geoengineering, Buffalo, New York. This weekend was furthering some flooding issues in the southern tier. I want to show you these photos that a viewer sent us from Little Valley. While we're not sure exactly how much damage was done, you can see the water rushing right up to homes and businesses here. And this weekend, events at the Cattaraugus County Fairgrounds had to be canceled as torrential downpours turned the area into somewhat of a river. So I have received comments from uh, underneath the last two videos on the weather and I want to pull one up here I know I live in Florida and the weather here is funny sometimes but it's ridiculous how crazy it's gotten it goes from sun to thunderstorm in seconds sun thunderstorms sometimes several times in one day in my area almost every lightning have been striking ground these recent days. Last night one hit right outside my house, stripped the bark from the tree right outside, out, right outside. Half the house doesn't have electricity. I'm receiving comments like this. Not the exact details, but pretty much the essence from so many, not just in Florida, but all over. All over. So, Yes, what she has described here absolutely should beg questions. This is not climate change. I have to say it again. I have to say it again. Guys, I have to say it again. How can I not? Climate change, global warming, if this was the cause, it would come about incrementally, not radically. We see radical changes in our weather. When you see radical changes, that should beg questions. Questions like, okay, when you see radical changes going on, that is happening. It's driven. It's deliberate. It's something not natural. If it's not natural, then is man doing this? You know, I, it's unfortunate that common sense is gone. There are areas that are still standing underwater. Uh, farms still underwater. Homes still underwater. Parks, national parks, still underwater. For how long? Months. This is Nebraska. A holiday weekend at Wilson Island State Recreation Area is always filled with the sounds of nature. But this year, the sounds of those enjoying it is missing. We've been closed since March, I believe, 15th. And uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be anytime soon that it, the water's out of the park. Park Ranger. March, March, the middle of March, and the water is still sitting there. Roads closed roads underwater what is going on here this is in um, South Dakota flooding is still a major problem for people living around Lake Thompson and recent wet weather has caused even more troubles for homeowners Kellyanne's Nathan Finster spoke with people living around the lake who are hoping for drier days Water and stress levels are high here at Lake Thompson as people are still dealing with flooding. We've got houses washing out and it's just the daily commute for everybody. It's just, it's not easy. 
Now the damage that has occurred so far has been certainly from, from the frustration standpoint and from the inconvenience, but the economic damage going on is almost immeasurable. The only access road for houses around the lake is underwater. Four wheelers are the only way to navigate the water. Homeowners say it's been like this for over two months. Driving through lake water, when there's waves, it's almost impassable. And the seriousness is primarily because of emergencies. If there was someone had a heart attack or a house fire, there is absolutely no way anyone could get in here. Homeowners say the lake has risen about five inches since last week. And they say it's expected to rise even more. There's a lot of tension just because of the water. People living around the lake are asking for some assistance. So the main assistance we need is to get some roads built, to get some rock in here and to get some gravel in here and get those roads built up so we can get ready for winter. At Lake Thompson, Nathan Finster, Kettle. Wow, two months. Okay, Montana. I posted a video and included Montana, but I didn't know that it, it Montana got hit a little bit harder than I thought, Great Falls. Um, look at these clouds. The creation of a supercell right before your eyes. Hell, of course. Um, but cars all over. A every rain now. What do you have? You have people having their cars destroyed, their homes destroyed, bridges, roads, and their community taken down, Stark County, and this, Ohio, again. This evening, many residents in Stark County dealing with a flash flood warning because of some heavy rainfalls. These photos were taken by a couple of Fox 8 viewers in Maslin. You can see streets, parking lots, and even a backyard is flooded. People living in Louisville and Plain Township also had to deal with water on their roads and even a creek flooded. You can upload your photos to our gallery as you can. So this was Kentucky. Kentucky, huh? Kentucky got hit hard this weekend. Toll on some areas in Bell and Knox County. And in one Knox County community this afternoon, officials say people had to be rescued from their homes. Here's some video from along Kentucky 92 in Bell County because we could not get to the KJ community due to that flooding. And Knox County Sheriff Mike Smith says the KJ community got a large amount of rain in a short amount of time, causing a flash flood in the area. Smith says flooding washed out a few roads and bridges. We'll definitely keep an eye on it and watch, you know, for the swollen creeks and, and, and stuff around here. So we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on it and hopefully keep everybody safe. Officials told our reporter that the roads were cleared around 11 o'clock tonight. They are still urging people to be careful when driving in the area. Roads, bridges, washed away. Heat wave, Alaska. But not so in Alaska, which is the country's coolest state. But that's not the case right now as certain parts of Alaska are hitting all-time highs. Joy Benedict takes a look at the heat wave. Just we want to be water. in the water. I mean, <laughs> like seriously. So Alaskans are doing what they can to beat the heat. Lots of ice, umbrella, and ice cream. Sunscreen, <laughs> 70, uh, 70 SPF. Parts of the state are baking under record high temperatures. Anchorage broke a half century record Thursday when the thermometer hit 90, beating the previous high of 85. Two other cities also reached record high temperatures. The heat combined with dry conditions is raising the risk for wildfires. This fire near Telkeetna, about 100 miles north of Anchorage, forced some people to evacuate. If I lose everything, I lose everything. The only thing I was concerned with are my neighbors, my children are with me, my mom's with me. So everything else is meaningless. Another. All right. The wildfires uh, taking place in Alaska. I really hope to God that that uh, my subscribers in Alaska don't have to suffer the consequences. Look, the heat waves in Alaska, when you live in an area and you are so not used to 85, 90 degree weather, it is brutal. Anderson, South Carolina, where I am, 94, feels like 100. Um, 
Something is going on. I have bumped into neighbors, old and young. They're, they are saying they're having a hard time breathing. Yesterday and several other days during the week, I had a hard time breathing. Today, I'm okay. I don't know what makes the difference. But this heat. Now, I'm not from South Carolina. I'm from the Northeast. It's hard to bear, but I've always been able to deal with heat. And the first couple of years I lived here, the heat was not, it didn't feel like it does now. So is it the, uh, is it just the toxic overload of all of the chemicals and heavy metals that they are spraying, the aerosol spraying? Is it the reduction of negative ions that we so need for our overall well-being, I am not sure. But something happens on particular days where uh, it's just very hard to breathe. So I also got a text. And I don't, you know, I don't get, I don't get, like, weather alerts or whatever. I just have this flip top phone, right? But I got this text earlier today and it said something about watch for fires. It wasn't like a fire alert. I don't know where it came from. I don't know. It was some kind of fires in area. So you've got these fires going on in Alaska. The heat is certainly not helping. And I sure hope that, look, we've got disaster taking place. They have so ramped this up. It's uh, unbelievable. And yeah, Alaska. Hey, go to Alaska if you want to cool off. Not this time around. Record-breaking heat in Alaska. Wow, man. Tennessee, Perry County flash flooding. Linden, Tennessee. This is all I found on Tennessee. Now, I'm having a whole lot of difficulty finding what is going on just in terms of weather. So, if I can't find it just from a general search, I will put in the state. And then, you know, the weather, like Tennessee flooding. And this is all I came up with. So, five to six inches fell in places which was more than the creeks could hold. What is going on? The closure of roads. Um, hell bay, hell bail, bales um, floating down a road. But that's all. The, the, the reporting on the smaller areas is so scanty, it's really very frustrating. This is in Michigan. And crews around in Roseville today surveying the damage left behind by devastating floods. Roughly two inches of rain fell in a short time Saturday and it led to washouts like the one under the service drive near Hayes and I-696. Some homeowners say they had anywhere from one to two feet of water in their basements and now many of them are busy cleaning up. All those thoughts going through your head, how bad is it? I mean, you're trying to think of where did I leave stuff? Um, I, daughters have summer classes and stuff. You got laptops, places where they left on the floor, where they put up. No. You know, and yes, yeah, city officials are going to be requesting a declaration of disaster. But if you look into it, you will see that people are not getting helped. They don't get help. If they do get help, they get help months later. Some, how many people are having to fight their insurance companies, whether it's a tornado or the flooding, well, who you're really fighting is FEMA, though you think you're fighting your private insurance company. Um, and, you know, there are areas that have not gotten the help they need for years. For years. A whole lot of areas don't get declarations of disaster. So you are on your own.
This is West Virginia. West Virginia hit again this weekend. But West Virginia has been hit incredibly hard over and over and over again. The flooding in 2016 that killed 23 people and flooded out something like 2,500 homes, the flooding continues. Moved across the area, many got hit bad with flash flooding. 7 News reporter Royce Jones reports from the scene of a rescue mission of a man who got stuck in his garage in Belmont County. It was a successful rescue mission for the man that lives in this Neff's home behind me. He told 7 News he walked out of his house, across his property, and into that white garage right there and wound up being trapped by storm waters. It was all jokes and sarcasm when a lighthearted 57-year-old Bobby Nolan made his way to shore. <laughs> Nolan says he was heading out to grab a pack of cigarettes around 7.30 Sunday evening when the surrounding McMahon Creek rose from its banks and flooded the entire neighborhood. The homeowner says he was up in the raptures of his garage watching as most of his life's earnings were being swept away by the rushing waters. He got no job, he got no money, you know, just, I'll, I'll make it. McMahon Creek runs through several neighborhoods across Belmont County. Along State Route 149 in Neffs, where the flash flooding happened this evening, homeowners say they're under constant threat of floods, to the point where rescue missions like Operation Save Bobby Nolan are mostly routine, says Clint Robinson, who volunteers with the Neffs Fire Department. Uh, back in 04, we did. We did one. I'm sorry. Hang on. Okay, that was a helicopter going over. Um, yeah, there are areas where now rescues are routine, routine. West Virginia, July 8th, just posted on the Army.mil. West Virginia Guard soldiers continue their response to flooding. 16 soldiers on state active duty providing welfare checks water distribution, debris removal in and around Harmon. And that was a different area that I just showed you that got flooded just this weekend, this area. And this guy is talking about he walked from his house to his garage and then needed to be rescued to get back. Okay. I, you have to be in the know to state definitively what is going on, but something is going on that is very unusual for this kind of flooding that we are seeing. And the problem is debate over housing need. The use of federal dollars has gone on for three years. After the 2016 flood, people are still waiting for assistance. Ah, the bureaucratic nightmare. Virginia's, West Virginia's housing need following the devastating 2016 flood in West Virginia, nearly 3,500 homes were deemed structurally damaged by FEMA. At least 1,500 homes were destroyed. Questions have not only not only how many homes need replacing, but how much federal money is necessary to meet the need and what is the best use of that money. Well, you can read all about it, but there are thousands who have not had any help in West Virginia. Yeah, the, the fight to get some help. The pause, then Congress and HUD and FEMA. Well, the numbers don't seem to add up. So we need an operational pause on flood relief. And it goes on and on. And really, this is deliberate. It's deliberate. You know, they're just wanting people to give up and they're wanting people to just go away worthless, just die. Unfortunately, what I just said is, yeah, uh, it's kind of the American way.
Look, guys, there's so much on D.C. that you can find easily, but yeah, they got hit hard, uh, Virginia, Maryland, D.C. area. This is Arlington. Roads flooded. The flooding is phenomenal. Yeah, this is in uh, Clarksburg, Maryland. Well, that's clearly. You ain't going anywhere, that's for sure. Uh, outside someone's home in Arlington, Virginia. Think about all of the cars that are being destroyed. This is a tunnel in the D.C. area. Virginia Avenue tunnel floods after heavy rain hits Washington area. Now the, uh, oh, that's like, it looks like it's almost up to the window of the car. Washington, D.C. flooding leads to water rescues, stranded vehicles. I'm sure, there's a lot of dramatic video on what is taking place. That's a very dramatic picture. Washington, D.C. Have we ever seen anything like this? Well, we're seeing it every single day all over our country in so many states. When you see something happen that is so radical, you really do need to look into the reasons because you are being lied to about climate change and geoengineering. Weather is used as a weapon. Please get rid of whatever it is in your mind that closes you off to doing some research. Our country in particular has been using weather as a weapon. They used it in Vietnam. They're using it now. I mean, look, elevators? Really? So, at Pentagon Metro, this is a subway. Here, subway systems. Green, down. And one of these videos, uh, they make note of there's been problems with this uh, subway station. Anytime it rains, they have water pouring in to the subway station. And they've reported it, uh, you know, a year ago and nothing has been done. Nothing ever gets done. Take a look at this. I mean, this is pretty intense. Here. Whoa. Well, that's some nice maneuvering. Don't know if I would have done that with kids on the bus, but yeah. Here. Whole lot of damage, guys. Sinkholes. Uh, just popping up. Roads crumbling. Sure doesn't seem to stop. White House flooding. That's the White House basement.
it's it. I'm I'm telling you, this goes on, and on and on and on and on every single day. Every day, parking garages flooded out. Right. Really? Devastation is, it's just a 24-7 now, guys, 24-7. And we are in big trouble, big trouble. And so many people don't have insurance. Well, I don't know what to say. This is this is only going to get. It's just going to be an ongoing thing. You know, when when they know that the American people are in a condition where they just don't care about anything except their own little life, or their their brains are gone, and authority figures have taken over their brains. They can do anything to us. Anything they want to. All links are below.